Hey there everyone, welcome to Ubi Chef. Unbelievably this is week 42. Um, absolutely amazing, I don't know where the time's gone. Uh, but thank you very much indeed if you've ordered so far. Uh, thanks if you've ordered this week. I uh, really hope you enjoy it when your box arrives with you. Um, don't forget we've got Valentine's menu uh, now on the website. Lovely five course menu, an optional cheese course uh, for you to surprise uh, your loved one uh, with and cook away. It's really, really easy to put together but a really great way to still celebrate even though uh, we're not able to all go out at the moment. Um, so I'm going to take you through the dishes as normal, um, through the bread and starts, mains and desserts and the cheese course, uh, show you how to put it together. Remember you get this lovely little recipe book with it which is really easy to follow. It gives you information about all the labelling system on the pots, a little number on each one which groups the dishes together, um, how you store it, whether it's in the fridge, room temperature or in the freezer, um, and then it goes through nice step-by-step -step instructions. Don't be frightened about ordering if you think it's you know, sort of out of your um, capabilities, absolutely not. Um, we've had a real big spectrum of people ordering. Um, younger people having a great time, choosing to sort of, you know, of course staying at home, not able to go out, not able to go out at the moment. Uh, right through to, to uh, Christmas, for example, we had a, uh, a daughter sent her mother, 91 year old mother, she sent her uh, one of the boxes um, and this lady, absolutely amazing, she cooked each dish, she presented each dish on this lovely little different plates, the styles of plates, which was, which was beautiful. And then she took pictures of each one and dropped up, drop boxed them back to her daughter and then they came to us and that was really kind of, you know, amazing to see that. Um, and it, you know, by the sounds of it, it really made her Christmas um, as, as she couldn't be with her family. So, so we're really kind of like um, happy that this is kind of, um, Prove really sort of like a great thing for people who are necessarily locked down, but also that it's kind of growing uh, and it's becoming something which uh, people are really kind of enjoying on a weekly basis um, um, for some some guests. So um, let's get a bit cooking now, and I'll take you through each of the dishes. So first up, as usual, it's our weekly bake. Uh, this week, um, this is lovely Gordel olive focaccia. So the Gordel olives are massive olives, uh, absolutely beautiful, my favourite. Um, what we send you over is the focaccia, all in this nice piece of tin foil, so that's going to keep it from drying out in the oven. Uh, it wants to be 12 minutes in the oven, approximately, and that goes, or until it's hot. Um, and then when that comes out of the oven, um, we're going to be serving it with this uh, basil infused rapeseed oil jam. Uh, so you can see I've taken this out now, let it come out to room temperature. Um, so that's going to be on my board, and I'm going to wait for my bread to cook now, and then we'll plate it up. Okay, my uh, focaccia, almost ready now. So I've got my serving board here, a little pot for my rapeseed oil jam. So remember this is just basil infused, so we've made a basil oil, and then um, it basically it gets mixed with a uh, touch of glucose, a uh, bit of egg yolk as well, and we, we uh, cook it in a posh blender that sort of heats up at the same time, and then it turns into this lovely jammy uh, rapeseed oil dip uh, for the, just instead of butter. So all into my pot, there we go, and let's get the bread out, there we go, so watch out, it's hot, unwrap it carefully, and then oh, it opens up that real waft of the olive oil, like almost sort of semi dehydrated olives, so yeah, if you can see there, Got these lovely olives in, in sort of impregnated into the top of the dough. Just, just absolutely lovely. And then what I'm going to do, tiny bit of oil on the top. You can use olive oil, you can use rapeseed oil, completely up to you. For me, I prefer some rapeseed oil. And then I'm going to add a bit more salt to the top. Again, it's up to you, but I like a real nice salty kick with my uh, focaccia. And then the bread each week, we kind of make it so it will serve about four people so just cut that into four lovely big chunks like so and then we'll just arrange that on there and these olives they really do take on a lovely sort of different flavor when they've been they've been baked like this they dehydrate and they become even more concentrated so it's a great lovely way to serve them so there's the baked focaccia with Gordel olives, a touch of rosemary going through of course, and the basil and rapeseed oil jam. So 
So we're making the most um, of some local pheasant um, on this week's menu as well. Um, obviously it's difficult, it became more, more difficult to get hold because obviously everything's uh, closed down. So uh, we had some pheasant, uh, which we had as like as almost like pastrami. Um, so what we've done, we made this lovely cannelloni with a herb pasta. Um, and then we filled it with a chicken mousse with a diced pheasant going through it and also some Andunja sausage from Dingley Dell. Um, so the sausage is lovely and warming, it's got a bit of spice to it but not too heavy. This is going to go in the oven. Uh, now I've got quite a powerful oven here so um, I'm going to put it in the oven about 6 to 10 minutes um, and then I'm going to take it out. Um, I'm going to add a little sprinkling of my little caramelised shallot crumb on the top of it and then back in for uh, 2 to 4 minutes as well. Most important thing is when it comes out of the oven the first time before you put your crumb, just get a little point of a knife, just put it into one of the cannellonis, and then just put it, just tap it on your wrist, um, and then you'll see if it's hot in the centre. But just make sure it's it's, uh, it's cooked through. So that's going to go in the oven now. There it goes, and then we'll be back. Once that's all heated up, my shallot crumb will remember that will go on just at the end of cooking, and then we're back and I'll show you how I dress my winter salad with the pheasant vinaigrette. Okay, it's cannelloni of pheasant time now, so I'm just going to take this out of the oven. It's been about about 12 minutes out in total. Just gave it an extra extra couple in there, but again, most important thing is use that knife just in there because every oven's different and uh, the fan. It's pasta in there, it's quite dense with that chicken mousse. So um, that's all ready, I'm just gonna leave that there. Now just to sit for a second whilst I do my salad. Um, it's got my shallot crumb on the top already as well. So winter salad, I've got some lovely little spinach leaves there. Um, got a touch of uh, nice bitter uh, radicchio, um, just for a contrast with that uh, sort of smoky, spicy Andunja sausage. So give that a little, little pick through, make sure it's all nice, nice little pieces. There we go. And then I've got this uh, roasted pheasant vinaigrette here. So the way I've done this, I've made a real nice pheasant, roasted pheasant stock. And brought that down, and I've used that as a base for my vinaigrette. A touch of sherry vinegar in there, a bit of salt, pepper, um, pomace oil I've used as well. So not too strong the olive oil. I mean, a touch of seasoning as well. And then just again dress that around. The reason you do this in a bowl is to coat each leaf in a salad dressing, so it's not like kind of like a bowl of salad with a gloop of dressing on the top, because um, then you just get a big mouthful of dressing. Whereas you want to get a light flavour of a dressing with each mouthful. So what I want to do then is just do a nice little pile, and I'm just going to arrange that just on the plate there. A little bit more radicchio, and here I just love the love the colours, lovely vibrant green from that winter spinach, and of course that bright radicchio. It's not everyone's cup of tea radicchio because it's bitterness, but I think it's nice to use when you're kind of using it as a bit of a balance between other flavours. So there we go. That's all my nice salad leaves. Let's get rid of that bowl there. Remember, I've got a little bit of dressing just to go over the top. Then let's take our little cannelloni. Then you want a fish slice or something like this, a little spatula, and just loosen it all the way around. It helps sometimes as well if you leave it a little bit longer in the container, then it will, so as it kind of cools down to slightly, it will firm up a little bit, making it easier to get out. But I promise it's not, not that difficult. So, see, I'm just getting that all out in one. I'm just making sure I've got any got hanging on bits just they're all gone and then onto your plate like that and then just carefully slide it off there's two cannellonis just sitting in there so they should stay nice and together like that keep the sauce you can obviously scrape the sauce out before you take it to the table um, and then just get a little bit of that dressing and then with that vinegar in this, that's going to cut through that real rich bechamel sauce which is around the outside. So that's it, you know, simple dish, lovely starter, especially for this time of year. Hearty, warming, but that really refined uh, taste going on there. Hope you enjoy it.
my fish starter uh, this week is these uh, lovely Brill Goujons. Um, so uh, we've got a little panko, very fine nut outer coating. Uh, Brill, which is uh, a bit similar to turbot. Um, uh, some would say just as good. I think it's a lovely flat fish. Uh, so we've done some nice thin strips of, of, the, um, of the fish, no bones in there of course. And then we've uh, panelled them, little uh, panko breadcrumbs. They've got some lemon zest on the top. They're gonna go in the oven, five to six minutes. That's all we need, no more. There we go. And then the garnish for that, we've got a pickled cucumber, just in here. This is just a pickled baby cucumber. Um, so you've got some lovely little slices, lovely and green. And that's got some dill in there as well. And then a little lemon dressing uh, to dress just over the, the, um, the cucumber to season it up nicely. And then I've got a whipped tartar sauce on here. So whipped as in we've made it really, really airy because uh, the mayonnaise can be quite rich. And that's got gherkins, capers, parsley. Um, so it's a little bit acidulated. There was some nice lemon juice in there as well. So let's wait for our goujons to come out and then we'll finish this dish off. My uh, Brill Goujons are almost out, they've been about five minutes, so just about a minute longer. So let's take a little bit of a lemon dressing. Give that a nice stir. And then just a little bit over that cucumber. You don't want to drown it, you just want to dress it. So dress is what our chefs sort of say, where we say you're kind of like gonna dress that ingredient with that item. So that's all lovely. And then let's take that cucumber course with some of that dill and then let it drain off a touch and then I'm just gonna make a really nice sort of attractive pile of that cucumber there we go you'll find with a cucumber once you put that dressing on a lot of, um, of the water can come out of it as well so just make sure that's nicely drained off and then divide that dill nicely around it so it's all even Remember it's all in that presentation at the final final part, eat with your eyes. So that's our cucumber on. Then I'm gonna take a nice spoon of my tartar sauce, give that a good stir. There we go. You can see how it's just beautiful, light and airy. Not quite a bit of that on there, so you can really dip in. And then let's get our goujons out. Okay. Tiny bit of seasoning I'm going to put on them, just a little bit, and then let's start building them up. Been quite generous here, so you've got a lovely five or so goujons each. And nice and careful, like so. And I've got one more there. There we go. Back for some more dressing. So again, give it a stir where it can sort of separate slightly as it's sitting there. And then just a touch. And a lovely simple starter, but stunning flavors. Goujons of Brill, tartar sauce, and a pickled cucumber. Vegetarian starter this week is um, a favourite um, in menus we've been doing twice baked goat cheese souffle. So we send it to you like this, this lovely like pave uh, cut of souffle with the goat cheese piped on top, a touch of aged parmesan as well. Um, and then we're doing it broccoli puree, we've got charred tender stem, crispy ripe wild rice, which almost like sugar puffs, and then a little bit of cream. The cream, pour it just over some of the, sou the souffle, not all of it, just a little bit of it, uh, divide that between, and that's going in the oven about 12 to 14 minutes. So that goes. And then what I'm gonna do, the broccoli puree is just gonna get warmed up on the stove now. Uh, rice will just be room temperature, and the, the actual tender stem broccoli, four to five minutes in the oven, that's all, it's just to warm it through, it's already cooked. So we'll be back, make sure your broccoli goes in the oven. Um, don't worry about opening the oven door, it's absolutely fine, it's not, it's not like a dessert souffle. Uh, but put it in, door shut, um, and then have your broccoli puree all ready to go. And we'll be back in about 10 minutes uh, where I'll start putting this dish together. So, about ready to serve our souffle. So, warm that plate there, ready to go. There we 
then that's my broccoli puree. It's made of 10 stone broccoli, and I've got my rice there, crispy rice. First of all, I'm going to get my broccoli out of the oven. There it comes. And all because the souffle is going to go down once we take it out of the oven, so let's put a nice bit of puree in the centre of the bowl. And we'll just give that a little kind of helping hand with a spoon just to spread it out. There we go. And then after that, I'm going to take some of my uh, child tender stem and just. Add that around, making a nice little base for that souffle to sit on. Again, the souffle is all that soft texture, it's really nice and rich, so you've got the broccoli there uh, to give a bit of a contrast. Then let's get the souffle out. That's the same, that's been in about 12 minutes now. Spatula, so just at the edge, and then carefully lift that out onto your board. And then go under, lift it off of that paper. There we go. And then onto your plate. Sit that nicely on top of the broccoli. And then we're gonna get a little bit of that rice. And this is just to get around the outside. Again, textures. Nice little crispy crunch of that souffle. Tiny bit of rapeseed oil, that lovely little nutty flavour, and there we go. Twice baked green barn goat cheese souffle with 10 stem broccoli chard and a little broccoli puree. Enjoy. This main course is a slow cooked pork belly. Um, so, what I've sent you over is this lovely little bit of pork belly. Um, this has been brined for three days, then it's been cooked um, 80. Two degrees uh, for a long, long time. Uh, then we've pressed it, cut out this beautiful piece, um, and you've got the skin which has already been coloured on the top, so it should crisp up in the oven. Uh, that's going to go in about 10 minutes in the oven or until it's hot, so not too long. Uh, and then my garnishes uh, I've got a shufar sea, which is stuffed cabbage leaf. Uh, this has got cabbage, potato, carrot inside. Uh, that's going to take about 8 to 10 minutes. Uh, just in a pan of boiling water, so all I do is have that just simmering on the side once it's come off the boil, put the cabbage in, put a lid on, uh, and then forget about it for eight minutes. And then when you come to serve it, you just lift it out, we'll snip the end off, turn it out, good to go. Black pudding cigarette, uh, so it's got black pudding, it's got some um, grated apple going through it. That's going to be about five, six minutes in the oven, um, just, to, just to heat up. Uh, and then we've got a brownie apple puree to go with and a dry cider sauce, dry cider, roasted pork bones, a touch of Dijon mustard as well. So um, I'm going to get my cabbage in now, just on the side like so. I'm going to get a lid, put it on the top. Remember, it's just to heat it up, it's not to, not to cook it. Um, and then these are going to get warmed up uh, when we're a little bit closer to plating up. We'll be back shortly. Uh, so my pork belly has been in about 12 minutes now. I'm going to get the uh, plate down from the drum. So it's nice and warm, ready to plate up. And then let's bring over our sauce. So that's our cider sauce there, and our that apple puree. I have a spoon all ready for them. And then let's get our cabbage, which I told you about how I'm going to heat it up. So just take the lid off, nice and carefully, and then use a spoon or a little slotted spoon just to Get that cabbage out, put that just on our board. And then the pork belly. That's skin's lovely crispened up on there now. And a cigarette. There we go. So you want a pair of scissors to uh, cut your clean film off. So just be careful in here because you get the steam coming out. So just cut through. Make sure that goes in the bin. And then what we'll do to plate up. So I'm going to take a little bit of apple puree, like so. A nice bit of apple puree on my plate. And then let's take our pork belly. So get a little palette knife. I'm going to put a tiny bit of mold and salt just on the top of that belly. 
It has been brined, but it not in a too heavy brine, so it could do a tiny bit of seasoning on the top, I would say. And look, there we go. Lovely bit of pork belly. You can see where that brine, where it's been brined, still lovely and juicy. So then carefully take the clean film off by just turning the cabbage up the other way. That way any juice and um, water which is in the cabbage which is kind of whilst it's steaming will just come out and go onto your tray and then we will just pop that down there. Again, tiny little bit of salt just on the top of my cabbage leaf. There we go. And then we're gonna get some of our nice cider sauce. I'm just gonna add a little bit. The rest I'm gonna take to the table. So, touch the sauce there, like so. And then finally, let's get our black pudding cigarette out. That's just gonna go on the top. So, really nicely, nice and refined, uh, slow cooked belly pork, brownie apple puree, shoe fast and a black pudding cigarette. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, now I've got a really nice fillet of cod for you. Um, what we've done with the cod, um, we've lightly salted it, um, just for a couple of hours, that starts to draw some of the moisture out of it, firms it up, uh, so when you, um, when you taste the cod, it's lovely and meaty, um, and it's just got that you know, really concentrated flavour to it. So this and the charred hispy cabbage both go in the oven for about 12 minutes. So in they go. Again, yeah, really, really simple, just heating up, but again, we're putting the dish together with all the different textures, components, flavours. Um, so when that comes out of the oven, um, we're gonna serve it with these three items. So the crust in here, this is like a curry spice crust. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a little bit of that on top of the fish um, whilst it's baking. Uh, so that's gonna go on in, in, in a second. Um, and then I've got my celeriac puree, gonna warm that up on the, uh, on the stove, sorry, um, just before we serve it. And then devil shrimp butter. So butter's in there, slight, uh, slightly spiced, paprika, uh, lots, lots of different herbs and spices in there. And I've got our brown shrimps. So that's gonna go on the stove. Remember, just when you heat it up, little tip, just add a tiny little touch of water um, and just shake it on the stove. And as it comes up to heat, it will emulsify the water. It'll turn into this lovely like butter sauce uh, rather than just a melted butter. Uh, so We'll wait for our uh, cod uh, to bake. I'm going to put a little bit of crust just on the top of that cod now, uh, and then we'll be back shortly to serve. Okay, let's get my cod and the cabbage out of the oven. Get it nice and careful, watch out for those pots or the box. So, there's my cod. So that's got that curry crust on there. Get my plate out from the grill. Nice warm plate, as my mum always says, to plate the Take the hot food up off, and then we've got our curry, a little deviled spice butter there with the shrimps, and our celeriac puree. So, now to plate, what we'll do, let's lift our cabbage out first of all. This is just to sort of make sure you can rearrange it nicely. So, let's put the cabbage on top of, uh, of the plate. Um, now I'm going to take some of my celeriac, nice big food of that in there. That'll be rich. And the cod. Just get your spatula in there. And lift that up. You can see where I've crusted it with that. It's got sourdough in there, almost like a ducker. Uh, with some really nice spices. So we'll add that to the dish. A little clean down. That will go with those. And then let's Get some of our devil, devil shrimp butter. Give it a little steak, see where it's emulsified. That means it's thickened up slightly. And that water that I added has made the butter into that lovely sauce. And then just get some of those shrimps. Remember that word, dress. Dress those on top uh, of the cabbage. And as well, some of that butter, which will then go right the way through the cabbage. Really lovely. I can sit there and eat this devil butter all day. Really, really good. Touch just over the top of our cod. Again, this is just gonna tie this dish all together. So plenty of devil butter. And there you go, really lovely dish this. Um, little roasted cod um, with that curry crust on the top. 
roasted his for cabbage, devil butter and celeriac puree. My vegetarian main course um, this week is this uh, fine tart, so it comes all lovely and packaged up like this. Um, we've got a lovely puff pastry base on there, um, so what I suggest you do is just take it out carefully onto your board and cut a little bit of the paper, so I'm just going to cut it in half, um, and I'm going to use some of that paper of what it's on just to bake that. So there we go. Um, you'll notice on there it's got a little um, polenta. Um, just spread over the pastry and then we've got a mixture of mushrooms, sautéed mushrooms on the top, a little bit of parmesan. That's going to go in the oven for about 12 minutes. So, that goes. And then the garnishes, what we're serving with it, five minutes in, in the oven for this. Uh, we've got some charred winter spinach, um, we've got a little baton of chard in there. And then what we sent it with is uh, truffle butter, truffle and lemon butter, which is going to melt on the top as it cooks. So just give it a little base as it comes out five minutes in the oven. And then to serve, something really fresh, uh, to liven out all about that, uh, salsa verde. We thinned it down a touch though, um, so it's almost like the sauce. Uh, so we're just gonna put that uh, room temperature around the outside of the tart fine when it comes out, so back in 12. They're almost ready to serve my tart fine now, so I've got my salsa verde just there. Tart's been about 12 minutes. Uh, and also my chard, uh, winter spinach, that's been in the oven for about five minutes, so they're all ready to go. That goes out, and there's that tart. So get the tart and just on the paper onto your bowl. Get that hot tray out of the way so there's no no mishaps. And then give that uh, child a stir where you put that truffle butter and bake. That's what we baked it in the oven. So I want to just uh, take a little bit of that on my plate, which is just gonna. Give the dish a touch of height. So there we go. And a little bit of those charred stalks as well, which are have a lovely texture. And then let's get some of our salsa verde. It's easier to sort of get on the plate at this stage. And then that, that nice little bit of that around the outside. And then some on the plate underneath. This is going to again cut through the pastry, um, the richness of the pastry. Sorry, uh, you've got um, the mint in there, you've got parsley, red wine vinegar, a touch of mustard, capers. So it's like that vinegariness of which will make everything nice and light. And let's get our tart, set that on, clean the plate up. Now I'm just going to go back. And get a little bit of those charred pieces. This just for the eye. Let's put a little bit on top. Like so. Not so it covers up all those lovely mushrooms, but just so it, it really adds adds to that. Again, we don't need to put lots of herbs and lots of things on there. We want to taste all those main ingredients. A touch of chard, stalks. Like so. That's it, ready to go. Tart fine, uh, polenta, um, and mushrooms, puffery base, salsa verde, and some lovely uh, truffle butter and chard. Enjoy. I really love cooking pineapple like this. Um, this has been barbecued, uh, so we barbecue it in uh, in the skin. Uh, we really get it nice and dark. Um, and then what we do then, uh, we cook it um, in the oven in some rum syrup, um, muscovado sugar, and then once it's soft, we cool it down, cut the outside off, cut it into these lovely wedges and just caramelize it because it's been cooked to all that lovely rum and muscovado. Uh, so you've got a beautiful piece of um, pineapple, which um, use some of the syrup, and which we send it with, put a bit of that on the top, but make sure you save some uh, for the plate. And then that's going to go in the oven for about 10 minutes. So 10 minutes, and that syrup will caramelise uh, all around the pineapple, lovely and sticky, uh, and that will be all ready to go. So, what I'm serving with it, um, you've got this um, little walnut uh, cake uh, made with it. It's got banana puree on there, walnuts, uh, gluten free. Um, 
So that's going to, I'm going to set it room temperature because I like the, the sort of the combination between the two temperatures. If you want to put it in the oven, a little bit of foil on the top, that will stop it drying out. Um, five minutes in the oven, absolutely plenty. Um, and then to have ready, um, you've got um, a little um, pineapple puree. Just there, so that's a fresh pineapple puree that we've done for you. So that's all ready to go. Um, and then have a little palette knife um, and your chocolate ganache here. So this is a white chocolate lime ganache, which when we come to serve, once the pineapple's ready, this is just gonna be spread on the top of our cake, walnuts, and I've got one of these little chefy microplanes, um, get it from lots of places, really, really good. They find they're very, very fine. Um, it's a great over. Sauce, meanwhile, I'll put back on the stove and warm that up. So back in 10 um, to plate this lovely pineapple dessert up. So pineapple's almost ready now. Uh, it's just finishing caramelizing off in there. And my sauce, you can see, that's uh, just heating up on the, on the stove. So take your little bit of walnut uh, cake out um, and then give the uh, little chocolate galash, uh, ganache, sorry, a little stir. What I'm gonna do, quite generous. I'm just gonna spread that onto the top of my walnut cake. A bit more, like so. And then just kind of like flick it up, just get a little bit of a little bit of texture on there, a little bit of height. There we go. Put that back on your board. Keep an eye on that because where it's caramel, it will it will burn. And then get some of your walnuts. And using that fine grater, get out of great. You might say grater walnuts really, but. Honestly, walnuts can be a bit kind of harsh, I think, when they're left whole. But like this, really, really nice. So, a little bit more on the top of there. So it's almost like a little walnut snow on the top. There we go. Let's get our sauce, just all caramelized. And then, touch your pineapple puree. Plates, and then we will get our little banana cake. Just throw a banana or walnut cake, and that's gonna just sit on there like that. Then let's get the caramelised barbecue pineapple out of the oven. You can be really, really careful with that because it's super hot. So turn the turn the pineapple over. Make sure it's got a good base. And then lift it out, give it a little drain onto the plate. Smell, smells fantastic. Really, really lovely. And then take some of your, your sauce, which is reduced slightly. You want that this sticky, that's the idea. And a little bit around the plate, like so. That is a roasted, Barbecue pineapple, fresh pineapple puree, uh, baked walnut cake with that lovely chocolate and lime ganache on the top, shaved walnuts, uh, all ready to go. Enjoy. This next dessert um, is a uh, rhubarb white chocolate and stem ginger delice. Um, really, really simple to plate this one. Make sure you keep the delice uh, out room temperature uh, before you serve it, good 15 minutes to warm up. Uh, much uh, nicer to eat, uh, that way you taste everything. Um, what I'm going to do, uh, if you've got a blowtorch you can use that, but I'm just going to simply put the jelly just under the grill. It's only seconds, so the tray shouldn't even get hot really, but it, this is just to bring a lovely shine uh, to the top of the jelly. So turn that around, and that is all ready. So how that comes. And you see straight away you've got this lovely like mirror finish on the top view. So let's uh, take our little lease. I'm just going to sit that on my plate. There we go. And the garnishes that we've uh, sent with this, we've got a rhubarb puree or rhubarb gel. Got to be chefy. So let's put. A little bit of that on. This is this is a little bit sweeter. 
Now we're just going to put three nice little bits of uh, that puree on. And then I'm going to take some of my poached rhubarb. This is poached forced uh, rhubarb. So let's put a few pieces. It's just been poached in such a grenadine. There we go. Let's get a bit of that in. And then we've left, left this not too much sugar in there, so you get that real lovely tartness uh, from the rhubarb. Um, and then we've got this really nice and light gingerbread. So I'm going to put a couple of, couple or maybe three pieces of that. I think we'll just go with a couple on this one, like so. So. Very really nice textures. You've got a stem ginger uh, rhubarb jelly just set on top of the on the uh, delice poached rhubarb gingerbread uh, rhubarb gel. Hope you enjoy. Uh, last but uh, no means least um, is a cheese course. Uh, this week it's a cheese tasting plate uh, rather than like a baked dish uh, that we've been doing recently. Uh, remember, you get your cheese tasting notes. Uh, so this is in order. Um, says what the cheese is it uh, to what the cheese are uh, it says where they're from uh, it says whether they're pasteurized or unpasteurized and then a nice little description and it's got its little, little symbol of uh, what type of milk it is whether it's the cow you goat milk etc uh, so you can put that on the table for your guest or for you to kind of browse and check the tasting notes whether you agree with them whether you think it's uh, completely wrong um, or whether you agree with those notes which we've made for you so there's um Take your cheese out. As always, make sure your cheese board is taken out well before you're going to you're going to eat them. Half an hour, hour, you know, leave it in the, in the cupboard overnight. Um, but make sure they're room temperature. Um, and then we've got these uh, little crackers uh, to go with, which is piece for the pasta machine. So I'm just going to take my cheeses and um, in the order according to my little uh, sheet here. And there we go, so let's, let's arrange these all nicely. So, there we go. There we've got our Comte Saint Nectaire, one of my favourites, just on there. And then finish with this one. Not tried this one before, this is a Abbe de Travaux uh, from um, the Holt Artois. Uh, and then we've got a little quince jelly, just to sit on the top. So, cheese is all, all in order. And, little bendy fork, every uh, chef's dream. And then let's sit our crackers just in the side. We can put them, can put them in a serving dish to go with. So they're all ready to go. Obviously, of course, you can add some nice garnishes like some celery, etc. but um, I like to let the cheeses sort of do the talking um, and really kind of like sort of sing out those flavors. So. I just want a nice little selection of crackers with my quince jelly and I'm a very happy man. I uh, hope you enjoy uh, the cheese course. So everyone, I hope you've enjoyed um, Ubi Chef this week, uh, all the dishes. Uh, remember, uh, this is always uploaded uh, to the website each week so you can watch and cook along um, or you can just use it as a little, little bit of point of reference but you do get that recipe book in the box so it's nice and straightforward. Uh, we've got lots of menus coming up. As I said before, Valentine's menu is on the, is on the website now. Uh, so me and the team, uh, we're getting ready for a, definitely a busy few weeks. Uh, stay safe everyone, I know it's a real tough time out there at the moment, uh, but uh, stay safe and we look forward to hopefully bringing you a UB Chef uh, menu soon. Best wishes.